Hi, welcome to Rare Rocks, and this is Janie Radabaugh going to talk to you today about meteorites. So here's our first one. Look at this really unusual rock. I think you'd probably notice if you stubbed your toe on this one. It's got a shiny crust on it. There's just a couple spots where you can see the edge of the crust. And this exists because it burned as it was coming through the Earth's atmosphere, leaving behind this really neat crust. You can maybe even see some dimples and pits here and there. Uh, the dimples are basically the crust draped on crystals that formed out in zero gravity. And when those crust crystals formed, they actually made a round shape. You can maybe convince yourself a couple of these are kind of round. That's really crazy. So we have a slice of one that you can see a little bit better. And can you see that round crystal? Uh, we don't have anything like this on Earth because our crystals all form when there's gravity. But if you imagine your free-floating blob of liquid rock out in space, then you would just form a ball, a sphere shape. And then when, when you froze in place, you would just maintain that sphere. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other really neat thing is if you look here, you can almost see like flashes of light. Oh, there's a good one right there. All across that slice, this is all metal sitting inside of the meteorite, and there's some kind of a lot of it. Like, wouldn't you say about a third of the whole rock is metal? And this is kind of strange because we think that rocks like this made up the Earth and all came together and packed together and, and formed the Earth in the past. So why is there so much metal? Like, you don't find metal in rocks on Earth's surface as you pick them up. And the answer is that most of the metal on Earth is found deep inside the core. This rock, this meteorite, is made entirely of metal. For sure, you would know if you stubbed your toe on this one. Very heavy. And there's a little corner of it sliced off. You can see that right there, really shiny metal. So, okay, that's bizarre. How do we get the core of a planet into our hands? And the answer is this used to be a planet that existed, but it broke apart and is no more. So now we have chunks of it that fell through the Earth's atmosphere and landed on the surface. That's super cool. Well, is there anything that's like a blend between rock and metal? Because the one I showed you before is rock, this one's metal. And yeah, the answer is, these are my favorite. I love these, they're called palisites. And they're su super shiny because they're mostly metal, but then the other portion of it is crystals. And these crystals are peridot or olivine is what they're called. They're like an iron magnesium silicate. They're really beautiful shiny green. If your, birth, if your birth month is August or September, you have peridot like me and you're lucky because that's a mineral in here. So anyway, we think this is right at the boundary between the core of a planet and the mantle or the rocks that sit up above that. So I love these, they're really special. The last one we have to show you is really cool. This is from Mars, planet Mars. Okay, same thing. How am I holding the piece of a planet in my hands? And in this case, we know Mars still exists. You can look up in the night sky, you can see it there. It didn't get broken apart, but something smashed into it and launched it on a trajectory that eventually brought it toward Earth. So we love these because they are basically free samples from other planets. We have them from Mars, we have them from the moon, we have them from some asteroids in the asteroid belt. And that gives us an opportunity to understand all the building blocks, the libraries, of minerals and materials that exist all across the solar system. Now, how do you know if the rock that you have in your hand is a meteorite? Okay, well, first of all, it's kind of unusual in shape and color. It's got that shiny crust on it. Oh, sometimes that crust is eroded away though, so that can't be the only thing that we rely on. One thing is that most of the time it's pretty magnetic. Put a magnet, magnet to it because there's so much metal in it and it really holds on pretty well. Uh, the other thing is it's not like lava rock. So if you notice there are no kind of like holes or bubbles in it, like you find with most lava rocks, it's very smooth. You can imagine it, it's uh, kind of shaped itself as it came through the Earth's atmosphere. So sort of round, kind of brownish, maybe has a crust, a shinyish crust and magnetic. And bring it in and we can tell you if it's a meteorite.